Wabash, the gentleman's rule. You gotta believe in that stuff. The Wabash always fight. Good afternoon and welcome to the Don Morell Show. Your chance to hear the thoughts and comments of the head football coach of the Little Giant program. And coach, a special week. It's Monon Bell week. The, the big game is here. And your team comes into the game after a huge 54-17 home victory last Saturday over Allegheny. What was it like being a part of that game and, and just how well your team played? Uh, kids played uh, extremely well, really focused. Uh, we feel like we're kind of peaking at the right time here. Uh, couldn't have been more proud. I heard all the trap game comments. Uh, I, I just think you prepare your team as best you can. You get them out there, and uh, uh, at that point, it's up to them. And uh, our guys took control of the game. Well, we have a lot of highlights to look at and a 54-17 win. Let's jump right into them while we talk about the game. First of all, the, uh, the group that comes to mind, we, we talked uh, middle of the week when you were meeting with the offensive coaches we were nominating the offensive line for team of the week what a job they did Allegheny came in as one of the leading teams leading team in the conference and one of the top teams in the nation in sacks per game averaging four you gave up only one sack all game and over 500 yards of total offense. What a tremendous job that group did up front on Saturday. Really did. I think it starts Kyle McElty, uh, Russ Burning, uh, the, the two seniors. Uh, then the rest of those guys are underclassmen, which is really exciting. Yeah, you have uh, Coach, uh, Connor Phelps, who was, who was in at uh, one of the uh, positions. Uh, Jake Slager's there as well. So just tre tremendous job. Your tight ends don't get mentioned in the D3 football team of the week. But you rolled through a few guys in the tight end position. Were able to use them as blockers as well. Uh, we did. It was tricky too because Ivan Martinez was out. Uh, but no, we played Dane. The freshman did a great job. Really uh, good group. Yep, Dane Smith, another yep. person we want to mention. And Nico Morris was one of the guys at that tight end position. You end up rushing for 426 yards. A huge chunk of that came from Isaac Avant, who had another tremendous game. A career high 229 yards, rushing for three touchdowns and. Seems to be his thing. Let's just rush for 98 yards on one carry for a touchdown. He just broke through a tremendous hole by that offensive line, and then nobody was going to catch him. Really a special athlete. Uh, he plays like he practices, 100 miles an hour, competitive team guy. He also plays wide receiver for us. We ask him to return kickoffs. Uh, he's a consummate football player. Isaac wasn't the only guy. I mean, he had a tremendous game again, but he wasn't the only guy that really benefited from the play of the offensive line and had some good hard runs. Michael Walker gets into the game uh, to back up Isaac, and he gets a 58-yard carry on his first rush, ends up scoring uh, later in the game on a one-yard touchdown for his first career touchdown. And then Mason Durrett got in the game. He had a 42-yard run as part of his 10 carries for 83 yards. Tanner Skeel had another good run for 22 yards. He got into the end zone. So really just a tremendous effort by your rushing attack all game long. I think it was, and uh, again, it starts with that offensive line. Well, and it wasn't just the run game that was working uh, for you offensively on Saturday. Jake Reed was 9 of 13, passing for 164 yards. He threw three touchdowns. Probably none prettier all season than the touchdown pass he threw to Rashawn Jones. A 36-yard pass that he dropped into the back of the end zone. Rashawn with a tremendous catch. One of two touchdown receptions for Rashawn on the game. He just continues to develop as a great speed receiver, but really good hands and a good route runner as well. Just great kid. And, uh, you know, he's very young. He's a 20-year-old he's a, a junior in college. Um, but uh, he's got uh, tremendous upside as he develops and grows. Isaac Avant finished with 284 yards of all-purpose yardage uh, because he was your leading receiver on the day with three catches for 56 yards. What does he bring as a weapon in the passing game? You've had him out in the, as a slot receiver uh, when you've had other running backs in the backfield, so he really gives you multiple dimensions on offense. He, he does, and I think one of the great things about coaching at Wabash is the kids are bright and they can handle... Uh, several different positions. P Panola's the, the record holder right now with about six, but uh, uh, it's fun to coach these guys and th they're, they're limited to nothing. Here we see Isaac go for uh, his second 98-yard touchdown run of the season. Had one earlier against Kenyon. 
uh, Clyde Morgan, who coaches Isaac in track and field in the spring, called me earlier this week, wanted to know, wondered if any player had ever gone for two 98, 99-yard rushes in a season. Still trying to find that with the NCAA, but Isaac just continues to excite the crowd with these big plays. Uh, we mentioned some other guys in the receiving game. Oliver Page with two catches for 16 yards. Ryan Thomas had a 31-yard touchdown reception on a great route where he sealed off the defender. Reed did a perfect job of hitting him with the pass, and it was an easy touchdown. Matt Panola with one reception for 17 yards. Defensively, you were really, you know, Allegheny came down, got a, uh, got a touchdown on its opening drive, and then the defense really just shut things down from there. A uh, great job by the defensive backs again uh, with Pat Kelly, a, an interception, a 66-yard return to set up a touchdown. Uh, you had two interceptions on the day as Brock Heffron got an, an INT as well, his first of the season. But you really made things uncomfortable, it seemed, for the Allegheny offense all game long. How were you able to do that defensively? Well, uh, hired Jeff Ramsey to be the coach <laughs> on uh, defense. Jeff Ramsey, again, Jeff Franklin, Joe Reardon, Brian Watson, they've done a super job of uh, where we have the ability to give multiple looks with uh, uh, the smart kids we have here. That secondary is bright, um, and uh, it, it makes coaching fun. It really does, um, but you, you got to credit those guys. Then up front, Blair Brody, Don Shook, uh, Lucas Piscina had pressure. You know, we rushed three guys all game, but we seemed to get really good pressure on the quarterback. Uh, we just saw on that interception by Pat Kelly that it was Busina who forced Logan Lee out of the pocket and forced the uh, turnover. You'll see it right here on the replay as there'll be just a little bit of pressure there by Lucas and then a, an off throw by Lee and, and Pat Kelly was in the right spot at the right time and, and makes the interception. Uh, a pretty good day except for a couple of missed extra points but a pretty good day special teams as well. Uh, Joey Ane just continues to really perform well uh, uh, as your punter. What has he brought to the special teams well, in the last two weeks? Uh, he was a special team player of the week. He has the ability to flip the field with one kick. Um, just, uh, it's a great weapon to have. We don't feel like we've uh, had that since probably Cam Sobleski, a guy that can really uh, bang it. Uh, I was disappointed again with the, we've struggled with the extra points all year. Uh, it's been a weird year uh, enough, uh, but uh, we feel like uh, uh, we've got a handle on that for the Bell game. You hold Allegheny to 122 yards of rushing in 32 attempts. They did get a couple of rushing touchdowns, but you, second week in a row, you faced some really good wide receivers who are quick and elusive. Uh, you had uh, Jeff Tiffner from Wittenberg two weeks ago. It was Alex Victor for Allegheny. And Alex got one big catch late in the game when, it was, when mm -hmm. the final had already been determined uh, and ended up leading to a touchdown. But you really kept him under control all game long. You know, I think this started last year when we had a few games. One was Allegheny where we, we didn't play well in the secondary. And uh, Jeff Franklin, our secondary coach, has tremendous pride and uh, has done a phenomenal job this year with those guys. As you'll see here in a few minutes, just a couple more scores to go through, but uh, it was a 54-17 victory, and we'll, we'll continue to watch the end of these highlights, as we mentioned a lot of them to show you. I uh, want to make sure we, we get the guys like Michael Walker, who just scored his first career touchdown on that replay. Um, show you Tanner Skeel's touchdown here in a minute. But now the attention focuses to the big game this week, the 125th Monon Bell Classic. It's presented by the Cancer Treatment Centers of America and Mr. Richard and Dr. Stacy Stevenson. Is this kind of a thank goodness this game is finally here? You've seen all the buildup, literally and figuratively, with the buildup of the stands, the rap coming on. So, so your focus really as a player can't be too far away from it the last couple of weeks. Now it's what you really get to focus on. You really get to pay attention. You hear the bell every day at practice. Is it kind of a relief that this week is here? Uh, I, th I think it is to some extent. This team has done a great job of uh, focusing, playing one game at a time, uh, not looking ahead to any game. Uh, we're not good enough to do that. But uh, the Bell game is finally here, and uh, it's trying to you know, wrap your head around the game and not all the, the, the 
other activities on campus are tremendous. Uh, they're a distraction too, um, but I think our guys are going to do a good job with that. We had the uh, TV preparation interviews earlier this afternoon. One of the questions you were asked, with the victory last year down at DePaul, was that something that just carries with you throughout the year and it's a celebration and they're building statues and everything else? You had an interesting answer to that. I mean, really, it lasts what, about two weeks, you said, about and then it goes, and then you're off to the next part <laughs> of the season? It lasts about two weeks and then, you know, uh, DePauw is going to take their very, very best swing, just like we are, uh, to, win, to win the bell. So, yeah, it's a short-lived celebration, I think, for the kids on our team uh, and certainly the coach. I think, uh, you know, our alums get to brag about it for a year, which is fantastic. Um, but uh, the DePauw Tigers are a very capable team. Uh, defensively, uh, they, I felt like they took it to us last year. And it's uh, the same group of kids. Zach Williams is back at linebacker, um, for instance. And, uh, uh, I mean, they are good. Uh, their record is uh, four and five. Uh, I would not be fooled by that. They are going to come in and try and, I think, save their season by winning the, the bell. Well, they had a, a tight battle with Wittenberg. Uh, a one-point loss to Allegheny, so it's not like they're losing games by big scores. They've been in every ball game that they've, that they've won, and we're close to coming up with some victories in, in some of those losses this season as well. Sure. A tremendous rushing defense. Last year, they limited you to 119 yards on 50 carries. You did get the three rushing touchdowns from Ike James, but it's just a tough team to, to really be able to run against, and that's something I know you would like to be able to do because it's such a key part of our offense. It's, it's part of who Wabash is, uh, but I think when they get the seventh, eighth, and ninth guy involved in the run game, you're kind of beating your head against the, uh, the wall. But they, they're extremely well coached, and uh, they are an excellent defensive football team. Offensively, they've had some injuries that have limited them, but they have one guy who is bell-tested, and that is Andy Hunt. Uh, he was the hero for DePaul on this field two years ago uh, in that back-and-forth ball game. Uh, he made the uh, game-winning touchdown catch. Last year, a couple of miscues late in the game ended up costing DePaul, and we were able to take advantage and, and get the win. So you, you've got to believe he's ready to try and atone for that and, and relive some of his glory from two years ago. How do you stop a guy like that who has had success and is such a talented player? I, I think he's like Alex Victor. You're not going to stop him. He's going to try and limit his catches, uh, but he's going to make big plays. He's a competitive guy. We're not sure which quarterback is going to play. That's in question. Uh, they're really making an effort to run the football uh, more than ever, getting in formations they haven't been before. So I think it's going to be a very interesting uh, football game. And I have, uh, you know, I just I know those kids over there. They're they're going to bring their A game to uh, uh, to Crawfordsville. Wabash is in a position this year that it wasn't in uh, last year. A chance to hold a conference title uh, with a victory. Does that add any pressure to the game, knowing you're, you're playing for the Bell, you're also playing for a conference title, and the regional rankings just came out a few minutes ago. Little Giants are sixth. There's a likelihood that we could move up to fifth based on the Baldwin-Wallace-John Carroll game this Saturday as well with a victory. Does that add any pressure, or is the whole focus on the Bell game and everything else takes you, care of you itself? You know, it's the Bell game, and uh, two years ago, in my first Bell game, which we lost, that's what you remember, we lost to Bell. Uh, we also lost the conference championship that day, but we don't, we don't talk about it. So clearly the, the, the Bell, I mean, it's 125 years of tradition. Uh, it's a big deal. It is a big deal. Fox Sports will be here. The game will be on Fox Sports. You can watch it online on Fox Sports Go. Uh, there is a link on the Wabash College uh, website with the sports information uh, or the information for the game. It's the second item on the sports website and on the football website. Uh, there'll be a preview tomorrow on the website of the game. Game notes will be available. Tickets, not so available. Not completely sold out, but it is getting close. So you can still go to WabashTickets.com, check and see. Going to be tough to find tickets on the Wabash side. There are a few tickets on the DePaul side, a few tickets in the family section. 
go to WabashTickets.com and take your chances, see if there are still tickets available. All the tailgating, I believe all the parking the, is long gone, uh, so you're on your own for those items. We look forward to having you at Hollett Little Giant Stadium. Kickoff is at 1.07 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, it will be an exciting day. Come bundled up. The weather says it should be a high of about 32, so it'll be a cold weather day, but hot with a lot of excitement as uh, looking forward to another great game. Coach, as always, best of luck. Uh, I, I know you'll, you're getting ready for your chapel talk on Thursday. And one final practice, we'll, we'll wait and see if there might be other practices Sunday when the playoffs are announced. But I know uh, you and the team will be ready on Saturday. We will. This has been the Don Morrell Show. It's your chance to hear the thoughts and comments of the head football coach of the Little Giant program. Based on the schedule, the Little Giants make it into the playoffs, and we'll have that announcement on the website Sunday. If that happens, we'll have a Don Morrell Show next week. If not... Thanks for watching all season long. My thanks to Don, to Christian, to Adam back in the truck for all the great production work all season long. Hopefully we'll talk to you next week, but if not, enjoy the off season and we'll talk to you next year. Have a great weekend, everyone. Enjoy the bell. Ding, ding. Wabash, the gentleman's rule. Gotta believe in that stuff. Wabash always fight.